So now that we can see them, I also want to talk a briefly about generators. Generators are tools inside of Nuke that don't require any external input. So one that you'll use all the time is a constant. A constant is basically a blank slate and it'll let you pick a color and create a constant color input. Another one that we use sometimes it's the checkerboard. We have color bars, color wheels, and if you click into the properties on these, they all have controls to change how they look. You know, so color bars, we have a few, a few uh, controls, not very many, but checkerboard, you can change the grid, you can change the layout, color wheels, you can change a lot of values on how that works. Something also to note on these is if you look at the format, unlike an image that has its own format natively, these are usually referencing your root format, which is set in your properties for your script. You can hit that by, you can get there by hitting S. So that shows you your full size format. This is what your generators are gonna reference. And that's really an important thing to note when you're dealing with roto files or any other reformats, um, because those are generating that file at that resolution. They're generating that input at that resolution. So we're set to HD here. And so you can see when we click into one of our generators here, our root format is set to the root, which is currently HD. If you want it to be something different, you can select that easily here. So you can see that changed it to a square. And you'll use this sometimes if you're working in 3D space or you're working with mixed media where you have different formats. You might have a main format for your project, but you wanna work at a different resolution with a different file input. And so you wanna make sure that you can, you set those formats appropriately for whichever node fork you're in. So those are sort of the self-contained generators. Next up you have generators that either can work by themselves or in conjunction with an image input. So the big ones that you'll use all the time is Roto Paint and Roto. And those actually allow, and we'll just view them, and I've drawn some in here, I'll clear it out. So a Roto shape allows you to draw a spline. So this is how you're drawing masks. This is how you're drawing shapes. You have quite a few options here. I'm gonna go over that in more detail in another chapter. I just wanna make you aware of what that is. Roto Paint similarly has the same options. It also just has the addition of paint tools, some blur tools, and a couple other options. So next up in the generators, we have grain, which you'll use all the time, ramp, noise, and this is a noise and if you click into each of these, they have a ton of options to change how they look. So you can scale it, you can animate these. Noise, something to be aware, it's not animated by default. I know in some other suites, noise is animated. Here you have to actually animate it yourself. Um, grain, it wants an input because um, it's applying through alpha and there's some math going on there. But you'll use grain all the time and I'll have a special thing where I talk about grain. Ramp. So if you double click on one of these, some of these have on-screen controls that'll allow you to change their, their parameters. You can also click through the tabs in the property bin to change more parameters for those tools. And that's how most of these work that are draw tools. So your ramp, your radial, your rectangle, your flare, those have on-screen controls. Something else you'll use regularly is text. So text, you can either, same way, you can pipe an input into it and it'll overlay on top or you can use it standalone. In the text tool, you have lots of different options in terms of kerning and layout as well as text. Something to note here is your text can be adjusted per word or per selection. So if you're doing some more complicated layout, you can actually modify that you know, per letter inside the text tool. You also want to be careful with this because this will stay as your active control handle as long as it's in your property bin. Even if you collapse it sometimes, it might you might still have control. So I always like to clear my text tools out when I'm not using them actively. And lastly, there's a couple other, and I'm not going over all the generators, which can be found in the draw tab. Uh, there are a couple that you might use regularly that require input and can't output an image on their own, 
One of those is glint and light wrap. So those require you to pass something into them. But what's interesting about them is they will allow you to output the effect only. So in that way, they are technically a generator and not a filter. But it's just something to be aware of that they do require an input to allow you to work in them.